Hello my fellow pilots and welcome again to another episode of Star Citizen FM. My name is Dr. Hawk. <coughs> what? My name is Dr. Hawk. My name is Dr. Hawk. Seriously? We're gonna do this. Fucking birds. In this week in review, we had an appearance of Eric taking it all off for the camera. Don't ever do this again, please. My eyes were scarred. Chris Roberts was in town to discuss further things with the team. What was discussed is not yet known or common knowledge. All we can assume is that this is information that is important and imperative to the game, and they are working hard to ensure that everything that Chris Roberts wants to see in Star Citizen will get implemented and wow us. Dan Tracy from Crytek has also joined the team. This is a good thing given the fact that they are working in CryEngine 3 and having a person with knowledge would probably be a great thing. It might allow them to get around some of the hiccups or bugs that they might not be familiar with and also have an inside man. Plus, Crytek is pretty awesome regardless, so welcome Dan Tracy. It's awesome to have you on the CIG team, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. We also have some cool fo footage of Eric Peterson's son, Colton Peterson. Apparently our generation has not played any PC games. Oh my God! Seriously, this is kind of disappointing. What is wrong with us? Apparently Dylan Elias, Colton's friend, is also suffering the same thing. Community, my request to you is we start spamming his son and friend with every PC game known to man. We need to educate this generation of all the awesome they are missing out on. So let's start with the original Wing Commander, Privateer, etc. Aside from that, I believe there's further South X by Southwest, and I know I just butchered that, but that can be seen on the Roberts Space Industries website. I would link it, but as mentioned before, YouTube hates my external links. We also got some further whiteboard footage, and the current project is working on a sort and search feature for the website. This will probably be implemented later, along with the updates that I've mentioned previously with my interview with Zane Bien. So any new members that are coming to the site, or any new citizens that we receive, will have a function to find Death of a Spaceman, and all the other awesome articles that are on Star Citizen. That concludes the week on review, so let us move on to forum feedback. Or as Eric put it lightly, F-bombs. A wide collection of interesting questions and videos was received by the CIG company, the first being from Ping Tuhi asking, What happens to a P-52 pilot, that's the short-range fighter by the way, that manages to miss their constellation and ends up floating in space? Will you have enough fuel to return to a planet? Are you stranded? Or will this be a long, boring trip with only you and yourself to occupy yourself? And however much oxygen you have left. Wingman responded saying that if you're stuck, you're stuck. This is pretty much a case of shit out of luck. So, in any case, don't miss docking with your Constellation, or any other carrier-based ship for that matter. Otherwise, you're gonna have to keep yourself busy. Razor Xerox was the next question. With, will the oldest profession in the universe be included into the game? For anyone that doesn't know what this explicitly is, he's talking about prostitution brothels, casinos, all the dirty things that makes humankind look awesome. Eric clarified that we should look to a freelancer and privateer. Extrapolate and guess. This means I'm also going to have to do the same as I don't remember either one of them. Shazbot. Shazbot! 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 M. Palman was the next question asking you, since Wing Commander always had strong characters, we will be able to look forward to seeing the same. I always found it interesting to walk around and talk to the crew members around in Wing Commander, as it actually felt more immersive. Eric went on to say that this is part of the Star Citizen experience, or rather, the Chris Roberts experience. 
crew members in Squadron 42 will have fleshed out backstories and possibly even be included in the Persistent Universe. This will be interesting for anyone who has done something pretty major in Squadron 42 and all of a sudden you get to meet that individual in the Persistent Universe. Lowski was the next to ask an important and pretty big question. Will the Cal Kilrathi from Wing Commander be in Star Citizen? There are a lot of copyright issues and other problems, so to speak, that are plaguing the Kilrathi right now, making it unlikely that they would be in Star Citizen. However, Eric does say that a kitty by any other name is still a kitty, is it not? That should be pretty encouraging for anybody that would like to see the Kilrathi, or rather, another version of them in Star Citizen. The True Lost was the next to ask, will there be a Wingman bobblehead? Wingman, as he was bobbing his own head, said that yes, there is a high probability that we can look forward to your very own Eric Peterson bobblehead, as well as another assortment of cockpit decorations, etc. I'm actually thinking that this might be along the lines of the recently released Mech Warrior Online by Piranha Games. If you've played that, they have a lot of similar features, ranging from bobbleheads, dancing hula girls, and banners and other assortment of lights and things that you can put in your cockpit. We could probably think along the same lines here, so look forward to more of that. The next question came from Blue Dragon. He asked, and creatively, if someone disconnects, will there be a punishment for this? This could be abused. If you've played any other game, Rage Quitters, and I've been guilty of this myself, is very discouraging for anybody that's actually trying to play a genuine game. Eric said that disconnects will be tracked, and that in-game there might even be bounties applied to those that do abuse the disconnect or quit to avoid any negative consequences. I don't know if they would implement any ban hammers or anything that would be more fierce, so to speak, for those that are really starting to abuse it and piss people off. We can look forward to more of this down the road. The next question came from Intelligent Perspective asking if Star Citizen will have comm limitations, such as you need to be in the same system to speak, or you must be this close to talk, like a proximity requirement. According to the Chris Roberts experience, this is a planned implementation that they would like to have. Barring the fact that people will use Skype, Ventrilo, TeamSpeak, and other things to get around it, it will be all the more immersive if it is included. So you won't have, like, Galaxy Cross comms or anything where you can just talk here and there. You'll have to be relatively close or some other unthought of thing that they have planned. Kavari, if I am saying this right, asked if we will be able to dock ships externally, like capital ships, etc., this hasn't exactly been thought out yet. It's something that would like to be implemented. But given the fact that they haven't thought of it for game balance, or it hasn't really been thought of from what I could gather, it is yet to be determined. So I will gladly report on this later when there is more information on external docking. Force asked, can you only have a fixed number of fighters in your Corvette? Or can you get all creative and just shove as many of them as you can? you know, can. Unfortunately, you cannot play Tetris in your ships. You know, you can't tear out bulkheads and see if you can stuff one in your closet. You won't be able to get Tetris savvy. There will be a fixed limit for carrier ships. This is kind of saddening. I was, I was really looking forward to doing something creative. Maybe have some sort of interpretive art based on how I place my ships. You've really disappointed me today, Wingman. Orkagima is going to shoot me for butchering that. Will NPCs adapt to the actions of the players? Recognizing players, for example, who take down notable people in the universe. This is based on relation to Chris Roberts' Death of a Spaceman, saying that NPCs, or at least the universe, would recognize those people that took out important characters in the universe or did notable actions. This is exactly what is planned. This is what Chris Roberts and the company want to happen. NPCs will recognize you as well as your family, so if you do die along the road, all your endeavors and achievements don't just wash away. 
This means that I have to be the individual that creates a floating hospital. Must be done. Draws69 asked, Will there be secondary monitor support for, you know, custom gaming rigs and pits? Because there's already a few uh, citizens out there who are trying to make some pretty impressive gaming pits and man caves. This is something they would like to support, but there's nothing solid at the moment. It could appear down the road after the game is released as something that'll be added on. But as far as Eric is concerned, nothing is solid at this moment and it would likely have to be modded in or third-party software. And lastly, a question from our famous... Wait a minute, you're not Legante. Gaz Zombie asked, How will looting and salvaging work? Will we have to tractor beam everything in? Or is ship scavenging a possibility? Will you be able to get out and manually pick up pieces and parts and relics and things of interest? Eric said that most things will involve using a tractor beam. You blow it up, you pull it towards you, you make profit. But there is the possibility of having some derelicts or mysteries that you could explore. I'm hoping this latter is true because it would be fairly interesting to find those things. Given the fact that Star Citizen is supposed to be a ship-based game, nothing ever hurts about actually getting outside of the ship and exploring. That pretty much covers all of our fan-submitted questions, and again, as I have said before, congratulations community. It is always awesome seeing the creative nature of your guys' videos. I really appreciate seeing all the effort that is being put into this, and it just shows further the correlation and cooperation that we are having between the development team and the community. Great job, and keep it coming. In this week's Wide World News, Eric took the time to go visit the guys at the James Webb Telescope. For those of you that don't know, this is the planned replacement, or rather a follow-up, to the Hubble Space Telescope. The plan is to put this thing deeper and farther into space than ever before, and it will be somewhere orbiting around the moon. The uh, only other caveat is that, well, it's not even a caveat. We won't have to worry about anybody having to go up there with a bottle of Windex and clean the thing off. It will be tested prior to deployment, and should be sending awesome pictures of deep space for all of us amateur and professional astronomers to look at. Also, in This Week in Space, which is a new segment in the show as well as something that is credible and a good idea to do. On March 18, 1965, Alexei Leonov, the first cosmonaut to perform an EVA, performed such a feat. He was EVA for about 12 minutes, and upon returning to his capsule, actually had to bleed off some of the pressure in his suit due to expansion to be able to get back in. This was a monumental moment in the space race, and Alexei Leonov, after a few scrub missions, and performing as, I believe, an advisor for the cosmonaut program, retired an Air Force general. Unfortunately, as far as I know, we haven't performed any recent spacewalks. Although, if you keep tabs of Chris Hadfield aboard the ISS, he recently just became the commander, and regularly tweets and tapes videos of his endeavors in space. A follow-up to the Wide World News, we find out that Pete Mackey is in fact not dead and is a dark magician. Uh, fans met it in a, another package for Eric, and it actually was... I didn't expect this. One of you actually sent in some veggies. Kudos, buddy. Although, at the same time, it, cheeseburger kind of does sound nice now. Later in the show, however, they went to uh, interview Mark Skeleton. If you would like to check out the entire interview, I suggest you do so over at robertspaceindustries.com and check the com link. However, a few highlights about Mark Skeleton. He is the lead artist extraordinaire, otherwise known as Awesome. He works on stuff, cool stuff, and frankly, from what I can gather, is sort of a boss. Check out the interview with Mark Skeleton, and as I have mentioned before, if you guys would like me to start including some of these interviews into the show for your viewing pleasure, tell me. I have no problem doing such a thing, but for ease of time at the moment, the best thing you can do is go check it out from the source itself. And now we move on to both announcements, some sponsorships, as well as a credible mention to a pretty cool guild. 
So to any of you that have heard of Systems United Navy, and recently saw the spotlight of them, you'll notice they sent in a very creative cake. One that was shaped like a hornet, and another one that was shaped like a citizen card. I believe this was made with fondant, and also gave all of the crew diabetes. Diabetes. Good job, guys. I hope you're proud of yourself. You're still trying to kill the development team. Stop it. However, if you find Systems United Navy to your liking, go check them out on the forums. They are a multinational private security corporation that wants to focus on exploration as well as combat-oriented guild play. So when they're not making cakes, they also like to kill people. With over 200 pilots from all over the world, with time zones everywhere, you can look forward to baking a cake anytime, anywhere. At least, that's the impression I got from this. Uh, you guys really should try to be a little more tough. Like, come on, cakes? Huh. In all seriousness, check out Systems United Navy if you're looking for a strong, coordinated guild, or rather corporation, however you want to apply it, to play, play with and fly with. Systems United Navy. My other spotlight that I would like to give to you is rather the exact opposite. If you're looking for pirating, bounty hunting, and maybe a little exploring and trading of rather illicit materials, you can check out the LAMP, Loose Association of Mercenaries and Privateers. No strict hierarchies, no demands for KD, and pretty much no anything. If you want to just go nuts and go loose, there's LAMP, so it's kind of in your hands. Systems United Navy or the lamp. The power of the lamp compels you. Check out Lamp Loose Association of Mercenaries and Privateers if you're interested in that. I also have now come to a point where I want to make a few announcements. In regarding to the last thing, as I get better at that, it should be a lot more polished and smooth. As of right now, this is something relatively new, and I still haven't exactly figured out how well I want to implement it. I included two because I actually found out I had a lot more time than usual. The other announcement I wanted to make is something I recently posted. If any of you saw this post, you're well aware of what I'm talking about. For those who haven't, I've recently had issues where some people have commented very well thought out and thorough comments regarding the quality and consistency of my show. If you notice in this episode, I've tried very hard to avoid us, ams, or pauses, as I know that can be very infuriating and rather boring as fuck to listen to. The other issue I wanted to bring up is that he rather pointed out that he didn't like my monotone voice. I know this can be a turnoff, but rather than cave in and try to sound more excited and awesome and j jacked up on caffeine or drugs or whatever it is, I'm just going to do the opposite. You're going to get more monotone, more boring, and more Dr. Hawk. A few of you already gave good advice, and that advice rang true with me, and that being, be yourself. Why should I change when so many of you already like what you're receiving? I don't see why I have to and I don't see why I should. However, improvements are always appreciated, however. I've worked hard to make sure that there's no stuttering or anything that might be detracting from the show, and as I get better and better at this, it will only be more awesome. So, all I ask is your patience while I get better with this, the polishing is better, the scripts are better, and I stop going off on tangents relating to the theory of the universe and how, what exactly an angioplasty is. So, this is Dr. Hawk saying thank you very much for being patient with me, thank you for watching the show, and thank you most of all for making this possible. If it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. So, without further ado, I plan to move on to the interview segment of the show, and I hope you all enjoy. 
So, as usual, ladies and gentlemen, I like to do interviews to keep you all entertained and not going insane. My latest interviewee is a man of very interesting uh, characteristics. Uh, some of you should know him from the interview with uh, Sandy Gardner. So, without further ado, I'd like to introduce you all to Chris Smith. Hello, my name is uh, Chris Smith. Uh, I'm the lead vehicle artist. Uh, at Cloud Imperium Games and uh, for the project Star Citizen. Pretty awesome. Thank you for taking the time to be with me and uh, talking yeah. to uh, some of, one of the fans and pretty much the community at whole. Yeah, no problem. It's my pleasure. So, for those of you that you know don't know who Chris Smith is, I figure, Chris, you could take the time to walk us through maybe, you know, who you are, I know you've said that, but you know, what your your responsibilities are, what you are in charge of, and generally what you do at CIG. What is okay. a lead oh. vehicle artist? Yeah, so I'm a lead vehicle artist. Um, basically that entails, um, you know, sort of uh, leading the direction of, of um, the quality of the ships. and. Um, you know, make, making sure the ships are going to come in looking good, basically. Uh, I'll, I will model some myself, and then uh, I will be overseeing the outsourcing department and uh, other modelers that are doing the ships overall. So that's that's pretty much my job in a nutshell. All right. So what, what kind of time frame does uh, modeling these ships come out to? Is, is there a conceptual stage? And then drafting, rough sketching, and then just bam, there's a starship? Or is it a little more complicated or simpler? <clears throat> well, it's definitely a little bit more complicated, but that's uh, the basic steps are pretty much right. You know, you have, you start with the concept. You know, in this case, you know, we're working with Brian Church, uh, amongst others, and uh, so they're providing us with either 2D sketches or 3D model you know, concepts, basically. They're sort of rough block outs. Uh, of interiors and exteriors and then we go and uh, take it to the next level pretty much and uh, the whole process yeah it definitely takes at, um, for, for just the modeling phase from start to finish it's roughly uh, a month for a ship and then you know kind of in the concept phase and in the different iterations that you go through uh, until you know until the boss likes it basically <laughs> So you know it can take it can take anywhere from a month to two months for a full fledged ship, for sure. Speaking of the boss, does uh, Chris is that I'm assuming that's Chris Roberts. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but does he have any part in uh, some of the development of the ships? Oh, for sure. Um, he's he's had close uh, actually involvement with the concepting of the ships. Um, you know he gets the ship designs. You know, he gets to look at them and, and put in his comments and everything, of course. And uh, in fact, I mean, a lot of the ship designs, when I came on board, were already sort of fleshed out. So, um, you know, we came in, you know, they, they had, you know, the, the uh, some of the ship designs and the, and the ship docks already ready-made by the time I got on board. So, uh, so basically, I'm here to... To kind of make sure that those ships end up looking really good once again in the game, you know. And I'm pretty sure a lot of the community is looking forward to it. In fact, last I checked, everyone's screaming for the Aurora to be revealed. If it already hasn't, I'll have to check the news later. But yeah, not quite, but yeah, it's it's getting there. It will be done very soon. Well, there you go. Hopefully, the community can take it as said. It's getting there. Uh, so. Yeah. One of the uh, one of the other things I'm curious about when the San Sandy did the interview with you, um, some of your previous work is actually fairly interesting. Duke Nukem Forever, Starhawk, Planet Side Two, uh, each of those games, while being very different in each aspect, has space elements. Each of them, Duke I Nukem know, right? had alien invaders. Starhawk is pretty self-explanatory, and Planet Side Two is sort of a hybrid if you think about it. Do you yeah. think that any of the previous work would influence the Star Citizen now? Um, I mean, maybe, if anything, I would say uh, you, you might get a little bit... I mean, for the ships I modeled, for sure, 
I kind of have my, I kind of infuse my own style into some things and, and my own little uh, quirks and, and nuances that I do uh, for just my general modeling, which is what I've done with actually uh, with uh, Starhawk. Uh, Starhawk was a game that they kind of let me go crazy on. Um, we started with concepts, but I pretty, I pretty much changed those vehicles around and they ended up being about 80% my design. Uh, a lot of those things. So, um, and with Duke Nukem, well, yeah, it was definitely sci-fi. It was a bit more Earthbound, but uh, it was definitely that one. That one was a bit more okay. Here's the concept, and do it look, make it look just like that. So um, this in this game, it's a bit more like that as well, where I get a concept, and a, you know, I'm basically going to do it like the concept is, because the concept's been agreed on by Chris Roberts and everybody, and. Uh, and so I pretty much have to make it look like that. Um, but there's, of course, like little, like since I'm, I like mechanical stuff, so I infuse a bit of my own mechanical believ believability and plausibility into, into certain things. And uh, I actually draw a lot from real, real world, um, you know, uh, inspirations as far as that's concerned. I look at a lot of mechanical uh, things, you know, um, all kinds of you know ships, ship designs, you know jets, and all kinds of things that I, I draw real world inspiration from. So it makes it more believable for the player, you know. I'm pretty sure that'll be much appreciated. Well, science fiction is something that is fun to uh, jump into. Uh, there's periods where the believability is stretched. I'm going to use <laughs> Mass Effect as yeah. an example, as much as I love it. The yeah. uh, transforming guns and as a gun nut myself I love them but then in your mind you're thinking whoa what you fit what into how yeah 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 it's it gets a little like as soon as it gets in, like the plausibility starts to fizzle a little bit you know there's always that um, that amount of you know disbelief you're willing to grant you know uh, any kind of science fiction thing, but uh, yeah, if it gets too far, I'm I'm always kind of turned off by that as well. So <clears throat> I definitely always try to infuse a lot of real world plausibility into into my uh, machines and things like that. Awesome. So your interest in Star Citizen, did, uh, how exactly did you get involved with Star Citizen? Did you reach out to Chris and CIG, or did they just see you and go? Hey, you, you're having a job. Get over here and work. <laughs> yeah, well, it, you know, it started off with the layoff, um, you know, the unfortunate layoff of uh, Lightbox True. that we experienced. And, uh, you know, I was looking for a job, and uh, I got a, you know, and, and previously, actually, about a half year before that, I had first seen, I saw the Star Citizen video. And uh, we had just come from... Uh, finishing Starhawk and we were starting on a new project which actually was sort of a space game uh, as well and then we saw that and I remember thinking like wow that looks freaking cool you know I was, I was very impressed by the video and, and everything I was I was pretty blown away by it so uh, that definitely stuck in my mind I mean I had I really to be honest had not known about Chris Roberts uh, back in those days when Wing Commander came out, I was mostly into Sega, I guess, you know, the Genesis. I, uh, <laughs> I wasn't really playing much PC games. Uh, although Wing Commander does, I mean, I have heard of it, but never played it. So anyhow, saw the video, was was pretty impressed by it, and then we got the layoff, and then, you know, I'm looking for jobs, I'm doing some freelance work, and then I got a call from Eric Peterson. And uh, that was, you know... In October I think and then you know after that call we, we had like a little chat and then a month later they called me back and things started getting rolling and as soon as he called me I was I was I didn't know who Eric Peterson was so I had to go look it up and I found Cloud Imperium and I and I found out it was linked to Star Citizen and then I got really excited so I was like oh wow this is cool you know this is for this game I probably so I got, got the blood flowing it. I'm sorry I said, I'm sorry, I said that probably got the blood flowing, especially with that situation. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, and again, like the, the vehicle modeling, the spaceship modeling was kind of right down my alley in a way, so. 
I was definitely, I would, I was like, yeah, I would like to work for that game. Yeah, I would like to work on that game, basically. So, you know, things got rolling and it happened. So I, I was definitely excited about that. It uh, yeah. came together perfectly in a way. And now you probably are happy that you're working with the grade A team, so to speak. You know, you got a lot of interesting individuals. Eric, Eric is very interesting and yeah. charismatic with his usual charm. And Ryan uh -huh. Church, and you got your comrades in arms, Chris Roberts. So yeah. it's probably a very happy Mark's, group to be working with. And Mark with. Skelton. Mark Skelton. Not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to mention him too. Apologize. Did you see his last interview? <laughs> I think I did. I'll have, I'm, I'm probably going to be pulling that into the uh, episode, but that's that's for earlier for people who have watched the show already. <laughs> right, right. So another uh, mention that I want to, sorry, mention a question. Uh, what do they got you working on right now? You know, within limits. We don't want to get you in trouble or have any curb <laughs> stompings or anything. But you know, you're you're in charge of the ships in general, but. I'm assuming it would be the Aurora and other things that are being worked on, or am I completely out to lunch right now? No, no. Uh, so yeah, Aurora is definitely being being worked on right now for sure. It's uh, got to get done very soon. So that's in the in the hot stages of production right now, uh, and I'm personally working on the 300i, and that's in the hot stages of production as well because we gotta get these guys out. So. Yeah, those two are, are definitely very close at this point. I'm actually looking forward to that 300i. I believe that's my pledge ship, so oh, I'm, nice. exci I'm excited to see that thing as soon as I heard it's supposed to look like an F-35. I'm like, oh, I can get behind that. Yeah, yeah, I think you'll dig it. I think you will. It's uh, it's a cool, it's going to be a slick, a slick ship for sure. Okay, well, I'll have to look forward to painting it with hawk wings and everything. I have to make it fit doc the Dr. Hawk persona or something. Nice, yeah. They do. <laughs> so, what can the fans look forward to in terms of the ships themselves? Like, what kind of fidelity and uh, specifications are, are we going to be able to look at? Or is it still too early in development to be able to tell? Because a space game can be made to look pretty very easily or very... Uh, with difficulty depending on your approach but you're working with CryEngine 3 so yeah well what can we expect well for the fans I mean uh, as far as like um, uh, flexibility with the and animations you mean uh, yeah I mean we're gonna be having a lot of um, I mean a lot of the mechanical stuff I mean you're gonna see a lot of things moving and uh, you know um, like the the little uh, directional jets and things things and and inside the cockpit it's going to be insane because there's going to be a lot of interaction with inside uh, the first person area of the cockpit. So there's definitely going to be high fidelity as far as moving bits and uh, just you know real world mechanics. You know things that you would see on a spaceship or you expect to see moving and things. You know um, as far as uh, for the fan itself, any customization. There'll definitely be some, you know, hard points on on ships uh, for you know switching out and customization for for upgrading, you know, uh, weapons and boosters and the like. Uh, so yeah, there'll there'll be some fun for the fans. You know, once they get a hold of the ship, that won't be the end of it. You know. No, that's good to hear because that seems to be the current worry so far. Is you know how how much customization can we do and. I keep thinking yeah. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to do the lock get a lock given that Eric himself said the ships are your avatars. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There will there will definitely be uh uh as far as the look of everything, uh can't really comment on much of that right now, but definitely uh, yeah, I expect uh hard points and upgrades and stuff like that, you know, for sure. Awesome. I think this next question ties into ships, ship expectations in general. Is there any word on the ship builder or at least a standardization uh, for the fans, like even myself, I do some 3D art, on what to expect when making their own ships? Because I do remember it was mentioned that there will be sort of a rubric written out for the fans, so you know we don't just have ship designs left, right, and center that don't actually adhere to any sort of formula. Right. Will we ex can we expect any sort of formula, or we still have to wait while you guys figure out what to 
include, what not to include, etc. Because there have been some amazing fan artworks and even yeah. renders of ships already, but I, in my back mind I think, oh god, what if it's missing this one thing and they have to tear it apart because it doesn't adhere to the rubric. Yeah, I saw some of those, yeah, those designs, and some of them definitely look very good. Um, at this point, you know, for sure, uh, we have to see, you know, there's definitely going to be um, uh, some standards, you know, uh, that has to be, you know, taken into consideration. Uh, but yeah, if, I mean, if any of those shit designs, you know, if Chris Roberts is cool with them and any of that, you know, it's... I, I don't know, I can't really comment too much on those things yet, but all I, all I know is like those ship designs look great, and if anything like that would be implemented, definitely there would be some limitations on, on certain things. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I'm aware of limitations. I, I was more interested in when we have a general, okay, fans, here is a list. You need this many polygons, or this general shape, or this sort of uh, design. That, yeah, that, that's a little bit too early to tell at this moment. Fair enough. So in the meantime, though, with all these awesome ships, for oh, your, any of the fans that are making them, do you just say keep on trucking, keep on drinking, yeah, keep yeah, on going, just keep on, keep on doing what you think is cool, man? I mean, and then you know we'll go from there. Well, there you guys go. You had Chris Smith, the 3D vehicle artist, tell you himself, go for it. And plus, you can always tear apart a high poly object and yeah, yeah. set up later. Yeah, I mean, once we get to a certain point, you know, if, if just like any concept art, pretty much, you know. Yeah, there's several iterations sometimes, you know, you go through. So, if, you know, somebody really wants to work in, you know, you know if, if there's some changes, you know, they can make some tweaks to their design and, it, you know, it, should, it, it might be perfect at that point, you know. Fair so, enough. Yeah. So, I have two questions here from the community. They were sort of last minute, but uh, Clow and Ju Clow and Jukarn, he's probably going to stab me for butchering his name, have a question each for you. Uh, the first one sort of ties into what I asked earlier, but she is curious as to how far the CryEngine 3 uh, engine is going to be pushed. And I d it wasn't really refined, but I'm thinking she means in terms of fidelity like I asked previously. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll push it a lot. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not the most technical artist. Uh, or qualified to answer that, but um, we're definitely going to be pushing the limits as far as polys and textures, because uh, we definitely want, and you know, like you said, high fidelity in the game. High, you know, the visuals are going to be very important, and uh, so we're, we're definitely going to be going to the limits, uh, you know, as, as much as we can, you know. So I'm pretty sure that my laptop would explode if I tried to play Star Citizen in its <laughs> current state. And uh, its current, well, yeah. Possibly. I mean, you, you could, <laughs> great. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, uh, it's kind of like you know, so put it on the lowest setting and go from there. <laughs> uh, I got a computer rig plan, so I guess I got to start saving those pennies. <laughs> right. And then Jukarn, uh, he wants to know how much will you be able to customize the look of your ship? Again, another tie-in. But yeah. I think this is more something that just can't be answered. It gives given what you've said to me already. Yeah, a little bit too early but in the face, but definitely expect uh, upgrades and uh, for the hard points on the ships. And like boosters, with... weapons for sure, you know. Okay, uh, so and, this... You know, cargo capacities, uh, all kinds of little different stuff that you'll be able to, uh, to buy or upgrade, you know, through challenges, I'm sure, or something like that. Fair enough. So, sorry guys, but you'll have to adopt the wait-and-see approach. Yes. My other questions I had for you were related more to you yourself. You know, when the game comes out, I'm pretty sure even the developers are going to be playing. And, you know, why not? It's a game you worked on, and you bled and shed and worked your ass off for it. What would you as a player hope to see in Star Citizen, though, if you were suddenly at the helm? developing Star Citizen, if you could just say, okay, well, I'm putting what I want in, what would Chris Smith put in the game? Um, I would definitely, you know, I mean, we're going to have this vast, uh, you know, space area that we're going to have all these different constellations and stuff. I would definitely like to see uh, a, a nice, a nice uh, broad planet side experience as well, uh, coupled with the space. 
to make it that much more realistic. And um, yeah, I think that would, that would sound cool. Like um, if, if you know, that was sort of like something I would be like totally for or behind. You know, to to have a big, uh, big expanding, you know, a universe that includes planet side stuff. You know. So you mean like ground engagements? Yeah, some ground engagement or anything on the ground, you know, like you have aerial combat on the on the planet, you know, you have ground combat there, and then you go, I mean, literally, like you're playing Battlestar Galactica, you know, it's just like everything, uh, everything goes, you know, the big ships, you, you live in the big cavalier ships at one point, and then at some other point, maybe for a while you're on the planet, you know, and you're hanging out there and, and doing missions and whatnot, so... I mean, the sky's the sky, and technology is the limit. So <laughs> all in due time, right? But yeah, and those are wishes. <laughs> I think my last question for you is again related to you privately. What would you do in Star Citizen? What is Chris going to do when the game ships? Can we expect you to be helping out people? You know, being a good Samaritan and explorer. Or are you just going to be going along with Hilara and all our piratey friends in chat role and just <laughs> having fun and drinking rum? Yeah. First thing I get is a, is a sword, right? A laser sword. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and be a Han Solo. No. Um, I mean, I would probably, you know, I don't know. You know, it's hard to tell. I would probably go through and, and become you know, a star citizen, you know, go from there, you know, just like learn, learn everything and kind of go and explore things. And then, you know, who knows, you know, what, what happens. So you're maybe, just going to sort of, maybe I'll turn, you know, defect the army and then, uh, become a pirate as well. Oh, geez. But, so you're not the first dip to say they want to be a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Once I become a bad, you know, you have to become good first, I think before you, you become a successful pirate or anything, right? Or anything. But I don't know, hard to tell. I might, but I might just, you know, you know, become like a good stand-up citizen and help out people, who knows? Well, I'm looking forward to see what you and the other devs do when the game does finally come out. Yeah, maybe I'll just be a bar owner. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Fine to me too. Everybody's looking forward to the in-game bar, and I'm pretty sure I know a few citizens who are going to be loitering there. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, I'll have my hands full then. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have you'll have your regular regulars. Right. Exactly. Well, I'll have a table for them. <laughs> well, Chris, I'd like to actually again thank you for taking the time out of your day to talk to me. You know, speak to the fans. Uh, I've been told that people appreciate these more visceral and cerebral conversations that I do. Originally, I'd always wanted to do a short ADHD format, but the show is sort of evolving to a point where I'm doing these, we've been talking for 26 minutes, so these nice long interviews. So again, yeah. it's appreciated that you took the time out of your day to go so far as just to speak to a fan like me. It shows that this development team that you were part of and this game in general is doing something that I have not seen any other development team do. And I'm looking forward to the day when Star Citizen ships and you, Chris, Eric, Ryan, all of you go down in the record books for best development team ever. Oh, and nice. that's not ass kissing, that is a genuine statement. Well, I appreciate that, man. And, you know, this is a lot different. I mean, compared to other companies, you know, where everything is very hush hush and. You can't really talk about anything development-wise. This is a total 180 for me, uh, 360 for me, and uh, you know, I think or no, 180. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's definitely a whole different direction than the fan interaction. It's very interesting. It's actually been pretty pleasant so far. So, uh, yeah, I'm appreciating it. It's cool, you know, and uh, keeping in touch with you guys constantly. And you know, there's not really, you know any secrets we're just kind of like yeah this is what we're doing and, you know even, I, I dig it well even look at all the goodies you guys get booze <laughs> snacks sugar like i i'm keeping i keep getting worried that there's going to be a day where it's just like in the news star citizen dev team dead alcohol poisoning and i'll be like <laughs> yeah, no. fuck no more star citizen guys we, yeah, we, we, kill, we killed them <laughs> pardon we all drank ourselves to death hey, yeah south by southwest didn't help either <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet 
So again, I uh, again thank you. If there's any closing questions or comments that you even have for me, um, go ahead. Or if you just want to do a shout out to the community. Um, no, I mean, time. yeah, like I said, uh, thanks for all you guys, you know, the fans and everything. Like I said, this has uh, been a very different experience, but very cool so far. Um, you know, just keeping in touch with you guys every week and stuff. And, and yeah, I'm uh, very appreciative of all of you. Thank you. Well, you heard it yourself, ladies and gentlemen. So I'd like to close off with this interview. And one last time, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Chris Smith, lead vehicle artist, and thank I am you. Dr. Pardon? I said thank you. And thank you. I'm Dr. Hawk, wishing you guys all safe travels and safe flights. You guys take care and fly safe. Also, one final note. Just recently, I took part of a roundtable discussion with internetspaceships.net. I suggest you go check this out, as we had a pretty zany discussion, and I look forward to further discussion with them. At its internet spaceships.net. As mentioned before, you guys all take care and fly safe.